What happens when you can't get into your car because of an error in the NFC between your phone and your car? And what it all has to do with analog tracing and how we're going to get our hands on it? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Opening your car with your phone is actually amazing. But as always, errors can occur and disturb the communication between your phone and the car door. Since the near field communication, or NFC, relies on a magnetic field, having metal in close proximity is quite problematic. And now have a guess what the outside of a car mainly consists of. In any case, this could be just one of the reasons why it isn't properly working. So to pinpoint any issues before we head into an expensive and time-consuming compliance examination where we're going to be told, well yeah, we had a look into the analog data and there's something wrong, we want to have a look into the communication ourselves to right the wrongs. And since we cannot bring the car into the lab, we're bringing the lab to the car. We're using the Trace Case and the latest version of the Trace Case app, with emphasis on latest because with the newest update, R4.0, we're getting a whole bunch of new features that we're going to need. And by the way, with the latest update comes also a free demo session that you can check out and it's a pre-recorded trace, so if you download the Trace Case Viewer, which is also free by the way, you can actually have a look into a trace yourself. All right, but before we get to the trace, let's connect our antenna with the trace case. It's actually pretty easy. And then turn the trace case on. Just click of the button. All right, there we go. And now let's connect our trace case with our phone. The trace case is actually having a own little Wi-Fi signal, so we're going to connect with that. Okay, let's boot up the trace case app. All right, trace case connected and ready. Let's have a look into the settings. All right, we know it's NFC A, so we're going to turn on decoder A, and we want to turn on analog scope. And then we want to have a look at the trigger settings. So we want to go to subcarrier on, and all right, do the same with the trigger two configuration. Also subcarrier on. Okay, so and let's have a look at the trigger position. It's for. Uh, it's down here. All right, but that's all right. Let's save. Now we're ready to go. We can place the antenna and start the trace. All right, let's, let's go here. Okay, we're getting a carrier signal and now we're getting a sub carrier signal. All right, that should be it. So what we just did was we filled in the blanks um, with what we just traced. So someone who might get this trace can actually have a clue what we just traced and what he's dealing with. So um, now that we have the trace in our phone, saved, locked and secure, we can go back into the office to boot up the trace case viewer and see what we're actually dealing with. All right, first up, we need to transfer our traces to our PC. Now, let's have a look at our data. We're using the trace case viewer. And again, the trace case viewer is for free. Um, you can find more information in the description below. So let's open up our session. All right. And we want to find, in the info box down here, the trigger detection of our analog scope that we set earlier in the app. All right, and we can find it here. Double click on it and we'll open up the analog scope viewer, which is basically, if we zoom out a little bit, the digital channel and the analog channel. So since the trace case is not a fully fledged oscilloscope, we only have a envelope signal. So it's pretty precise when it comes to undershoots, overshoots, um, amplitude and stuff like that. What do we see here? We can see that the carrier is on. So the carrier, in this case the door handle, was sending, was sending a signal. And we see that the carrier was modulated. This is when we held our phone into the magnetic field of the door handle. And we can see 
that the subcarrier is on. So there was a conversation between our phone and the car door, um, simply put. All right, let's zoom in here. Because this is where it's interesting. This is the communication we want to see. All right. So, all right, a little bit closer. So, oh, actually, let's go here. All right, so. Now, we want to make, we want to evaluate this communication. So what do we do? Um, first, we're gonna, with the left mouse button, we're gonna set a margin cursor here, and the second one over here. All right, and now we want to have a, a very, a, a verification of this result. We want to see what's the deal with it. All right, let's go over to measure, NFC measurement. And since we know it is a NFC A communication, um, we want to select NFC A waveform. And we, we want to go to settings. And then we want to set the limits from current view to margin cursor one and two, the cursors we just set. And then we want to have a look at the overshoot and the undershoot. We can potentially select the timings right here. However, it is already included in the over and the undershoot. All right. And now everything is measured for us and we get a result box over here in the bottom right corner in very nice blue. And we can scroll through it and we want to have a look at the overshoot. Uh, we can actually find it down here. However, if it's not here, we can double click on it and it will appear there. All right. And now we want to have a verification for our result. We want to have like a verdict of this, of the timings. So we're going to right mouse button on it and go to quick measurement and then to verify result. All right. And this is everything here is fine. It's everything that we want to see and need. And there we go. All right. Everything seems to be fine. Everything has an okay behind it. So every timing from our session is falling into the NFC forum standard interval. So we have to be in this interval to get an okay. Everything is within limits and everything is fine from the carrier side. So we can say that the carrier or the door in this case is not at fault here. It's not causing the issue. So what did we just do? Basically, we went into the field and traced NFC on the fly. We got our hands on digital and analog data and determined whether the problem was due to a timing issue or not. The next step would be the evaluation of the subcarrier, which would be the phone in this case. But that is a task for another video. See you in the next one.